Hi everyone, welcome back to another Astra Exploring video. If you have watched my review of the Optolong L-Extreme narrowband filter, then you'll know that in that video I mentioned that one of the negatives I found with using that filter is that it produces star halos sometimes in my final images and they are quite ugly to look at and you can see one on the screen right now. And in that video I mentioned being able to remove the halos in post-processing, whatever software you're using. And I've had a few people request how to do that. So in today's video, I'm to show you how to remove star halos using Photoshop and using PixInsight. Now there's no magic button that we can press in software to be able to just remove star halos like this one here, but there are a couple of simple methods that we can use to be able to remove them. And I'm going to go ahead and say that it's not perfect, it takes a bit of practice, but your images will look a lot better for it. So let's get right into it using Photoshop first of all. And what I've got here is a picture of the North America Nebula. This is just uh, one hour of data. I've shared this on my um, channel and Instagram a couple of times. And this was my first time using my 533 one-shot color camera and the Optolong L-Extreme. And I was very disappointed to see star halos on a couple of the stars. I think there are three stars in this image in total that have halos and it generally only happens on the really bright stars. So this is a manual process. It does take a little bit of time, but in my experience, in my own personal equipment, it doesn't happen on that many stars. So the fact that it's a manual process doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into this. And the tool that we're gonna use is the healing brush tool. So if you don't have the healing brush tool available to you, just right click, because you might have the spot healing brush or you might have one of these other three, depending on what you've been using before. So um, if you don't have the healing brush tool selected, just go ahead and right click on that and make sure that you've got that selected. Now, once you've got the healing brush selected, you're going to want to go up to the top here and click on this drop down, and you're going to want to slide your hardness down. I've got mine set to zero. It doesn't necessarily need to be at zero, but it does need to be a nice soft brush. We don't want um, a hard edge on this when we're trying to do it. And the size will depend on the size of the halo that you're trying to remove. In this one, I found that a size of 16 pixels is just about enough for me to be able to uh, remove the halo uh, without affecting the star and lots of data around it. So now that we've got all that selected, it's time to actually get rid of the halo. And the way that we're going to do that is on Windows, if you hold down the Alt key, um, which on a Mac I think might be the Option key, I'm not 100% sure. But on Windows, if you hold down the Alt key, you'll see that the cursor changes to this sort of target view instead. And what that's doing is we're gonna select a bit of data in the image that we want to use as our sample data to replace the halo. So essentially we're going to paint over this halo with some of this nebulosity of the North American nebula instead. So it's really important to choose an area that's really close to the part of the screen, uh, sorry, part of the image that you're trying to paint over. You don't wanna be selecting a star and we don't just want to um, paint over this star, especially when it's such a bright star, because um, it obviously at that point kind of makes the image look fake. And if it's one of the bigger stars, then it can be quite obvious that it's missing. So we don't necessarily want to do that either. So that's why it's really important to get the size of your brush correct. Now, before we start actually painting over this halo, it's really important to make sure that we're doing this on a new layer. So I'm using a 16-bit TIFF file here, and you can see that I've only got the background layer at the minute. So I'm gonna to wanna to create a new layer. Various ways to do this, I use the keyboard short cut of uh, shift control alt n plus e um, so you can see I've got a new layer created there and that is selected so I'm now going to hold down the alt key and I'm going to select a part of the sky that's very close to the halo but not touching it um, somewhere around there and I'm just going to start painting over the halo very slowly with this brush Now that I've gotten rid of probably about a third of the halo, you can see that you know this part of the nebula is a slightly different color to this part of the nebula. So it's important that when you're going around, don't just select one part of the sky and then start brushing over the halo. You also don't want to remove the star completely because your image will look a bit strange at that point, especially as it's one of the brightest stars in the image. So I'm now gonna select this part of the sky and start painting over this bit um, because it should result in a better blend and you can see that I'm revealing data that's hidden 
behind this halo. And again, I'm going to select this part of the sky here for this part of the halo. And, you know, this result isn't going to be perfect, but it is going to look a lot better. So the beauty of doing this in a layer is that if you completely mess it up, you can just delete the layer, add a new layer and start again. Um, but equally, when you just want to look back at what it looked like before and after, you can just turn the layer on and off. So this is what we had a minute ago, and that's what we've got now. So I think you can agree that that looks a lot better than it did before. Is it perfect? Uh, probably not, but I'd say it's a damn good job. And actually, people will notice that star halo quite a lot because that is a pretty bad halo. But I don't think anyone is going to notice that there used to be a halo there after that. So um, if I just zoom out of this picture back to full screen, if I leave it there, if I turn it back on and off again, so you can see that the halo is there and now it's not. So you can see that even when zoomed out, that's made such a massive difference to the image. So that was with using the healing brush tool. You could also do this using the clone stamp tool, which essentially works in a very similar way. So if I just zoom back in for a second, again, with this, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to hold down the Alt key, select a part of the sky, and with the stamp, you can essentially, if you think about actually you know, hitting a, a stamp down on a piece of paper or something like that, you can do that with the mouse. So you can just keep clicking and you can do this with the heal healing brush as well. Just keep clicking to blend and you might get a slightly better blend by constantly clicking and just making really small adjustments rather than just sort of holding down the mouse key and painting it like a brush like I did earlier. So that's how you do it in Photoshop. Let's now move over to PixInsight and see how we do it in there, but it's very, very similar to how we do it there. This is the exact same image. Again, um, I'm just zoomed in and the halo you can see is there. And in PixInsight, I am going to use the clone stamp tool, which can be found under process painting clone stamp. And I've not been using PixInsight very long, so there might be a much better way of doing this than what I found. But I found that you can get some good results using uh, the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to do that in here. And if somebody knows of a better way to do this in PixInsight or in Photoshop, then please do leave a comment down below to help others out. So with the clone stamp tool, what we want to do is we want to click into the image to allow us to have these options available to us. So um, radius I've got set to 10. I think that is a, a good radius for this halo when I'm doing it again. That may differ for your image. The softness I've got set all the way up to 1 and opacity all the way up to 1. Again, that may differ depending on your own image, but this has worked for me. So what we want to do now is we, again, want to take a bit of data from the nebula that we want to replace the halo with. So to do that on a Windows keyboard, you want to hold down the control key. On a Mac, I think that might be the command key. I'm not entirely sure. Somebody can correct me down in the comments. Um, so holding down the control key, left mouse click, and we've now got our source point data. And essentially, we just want to do the same thing as before. We just want to start moving around the star. And I've made a bit of a hash of that, as you can see. Oops. And at any point that you want to change, um, you can just, again, press the control key, left mouse click, and it will use that data instead. And I've gone, I've gone a bit too aggressive here, but that doesn't look <laughs> that great, but we can tidy that up, I think, like so. There, I think, oops. That looks a lot better than it did, but it's not perfect. But to apply that, I would, I would spend much longer doing this in, in reality, but in order to apply that, and then look back at what you've done. Just hit this green tick to execute. That will then actually apply the stamp to the image uh, before you click the tick that it's not actually applied it to the image. So now we can click on undo 
and the forward key just to see the before and after. So you can see that I've made a little bit of a hash of it because I've sort of not painted over here very well. So I can go back to this data here. I think I'm going to turn the opacity down to about half now that I've gotten rid of the halo. And I just want to make some smaller adjustments. So I've got my source point there and I can just start filling in these bits here where I made a bit of a mess of it before. Oops. If at any point you mess it up, you can just press Control Z and that will undo your previous mouse click. And then if I want to do a little bit more there, there. So that's where we started. That was after a first go, that's after the second go. Again, it's not 100% perfect, but it is a lot better. And if I zoom out and look at where we started versus where we are now, you can see that that does look a lot better. In reality, you would spend a bit longer doing that. It's really worth taking your time here because if you make a bit of a hash of it, kind of like I did with, with this one, um, then it is quite obvious in the final image. So do take your time, but that's just an easy way of getting rid of star halos using Photoshop and PixInsight. If you like this video and found something useful out of it, then please do give it a thumbs up. I hope this it was useful to some people. My name is Nick and you've been watching Astro Exploring and I will see you in the next video.